Good morning. Welcome to St. Patrick's. We have the following announcements this morning. Please pray for all those we lift up in prayer this weekend at the Memorial Mass and for all those we pray for throughout the month of November. Join us for the Turkey Social this upcoming Saturday, November 18th. This is a fun night of raffles and laughs and food. It's a wonderful fundraiser that does so much to support our parish. So please come out and support this beautiful evening together. Please bring all, all donations for the Turkey Social raffles by the end of the weekend or place them in the church. Thank you for your help with this. Please see the bulletin for help with baked goods for the Turkey Social and thank you also for your generosity here. Our Thanksgiving ecumenical service is held here at St. Patrick's this year on Monday, November 20th at 7 p.m. in the church, so please join us. See the bulletin for how you can help donate turkeys for the upcoming food pantry distribution, and thank you also for your generosity here. Members of the Visitation Ministry, please pick up the flowers in the sacristy for delivery this week to our homebound parishioners. Thank you. Let us begin our prayer this morning by singing hymn number 202, We Gather Together, 202. Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we join together this morning, we now celebrate our annual memorial mass, lifting up those we have lost in this past year, and trusting them to the care of our Lord, as we do each November. As you know, November is a month where we again Remember that there will be a day where we meet the Lord face to face, and we want to entrust ourselves completely to his care. So that in mind, we specifically lift up all those who we've lost over this last year to entrust them to our Lord, that they may be with him forever. Ernest E. Nichols. Donald C. Trottier. Kevin F. McCann, Thomas F. Donahue, Jr., Claire Rita White, Glenn D. Anderson, Robert A. Bernatches, <laughs> Baby Saul DePiro, Denise Joyce Clark, 
William J. Bailey, Jr. Gary F. Flynn. And now, my friends, placing our trust in the Lord, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you died and rose to bring us to life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our light in the darkness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our hope of resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may per pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is perfection of prudence. And whoever, for her sake, keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, 
my soul burns like the earth parched, lifeless and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. Thus I will bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. I will remember you upon my couch. And through the night watches, I will meditate on you. the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, 
They all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the doors were locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, we just all sung together that line in the Psalms about my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Now, this is a rhetorical question, so don't raise your hands. But have we ever felt that way about God? Have we actually ever felt that way about God? Or does that seem like something way out there and we're way over here and the two have not yet met? Because I would dare to say, in our own modern culture, this is probably more the case in a certain sense. But I would also argue in a certain sense you have experienced this, and maybe not just have known it. And why can we say that? Because each of us has had our heart stirred in the past in longing. Something awakens our hearts such that they're looking for this fulfillment. Case in point, you ever heard a very beautiful piece of music, or maybe saw a beautiful piece of art, or some kind of film or something that kind of just went right through you to your heart and just awakened that bowl in your... No? Just me? Okay. I have a feeling everybody in this room has experienced this in some way, shape, or form. You've come to know this pull, this ache, this longing that exists. And once upon a time, the church was really good at awakening this in those who were in the pews. If you go over to Europe, if you go over to these beautiful, huge cathedrals that exist over there, like, it's not an exercise in opulence or just, you know, this ridiculousness of the church saying, look at us and everything else. No, it was designed with purpose. It was designed with all of the height, with all the breadth, with all the width, to inspire in those sitting in the pews that fullness of God and who He is. That height, that depth, that breadth. You had right in the middle of the entire setup, almost in all these cathedrals, a choir, a choir setting where they, everything would be blending together right there because they're facing each other in this enclosed area and it would literally shoot up right in the middle of everything out to everybody sitting and receiving that gift. And it awoken something. Even if they were, even if people were like struggling with listening to the scriptures or anything else, all of it together awakened this depth of God and this gift that he wants to give us. This gift that he has indeed given us, right there, in the cross. Because he has a love for us that is beyond all telling. A love that he has woven into us in this longing for all that is true, good, and beautiful. The Greeks had a word for it because we have one word for love in the English language. The Greeks had many. They called this longing for all that is true, good, and beautiful 
eros. Not the bad version that we have in today's world, but the authentic version of that longing. But the thing is, whatever that thing in your life is, maybe it's again the art forms we're talking about, maybe it's the art form of a sport or dancing or something else. I don't know. You're all individuals. God's made you in his image and likeness, and he's made you to experience one of these beautiful gifts. All of it, whatever is good in it, is meant to point us beyond, back to its origin and source. The thing of our world today is, dear friends, we get caught up in staying right in that area when we turn that thing that is awakening things in our heart into an idol. We don't let it carry us to the living God who is its origin, who wants to take us to the fullness of that gift. Now, I don't know what it is for each of you, but, you know, one of the things that kind of awakens me is music. But not just any music. I need music without lyrics. I can't concentrate on the lyrics. It pulls me in too many directions. But if you just simply put in just, like, some beautiful piece of, like, music, whether it's something classical like Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, whether it's something like the, uh, you know, some modern film score, like John Williams is the soundtrack of my life. Some other composers too, but you know, the list is long. I'm not going to keep you bored with that all day. But why? Because it goes right past all up here, right there. You've experienced that. The people we lift up in prayer today have experienced that. But they also were drawn to our Lord as well. Because that's the end of all of this. We can't get caught on the idols. And so the desire is beautiful. The desire is wonderful. But we then get caught up in not letting ourselves go deeper. Because there is a design to all of this. We talk about being made in God's image and likeness. It's meant to take us onward a little further into our destiny, which is that union with him forever. That's why, again, when we live, when we have all these things of God saying, it's not good to go this way, it's not because he doesn't love you. No, precisely, it's the opposite. He loves you so much that he wants to draw you, according to his design, into the union you are made for in this life. And the saints themselves have talked about the kind of hitting the bottom of heaven in this life. Whether it's a St. Thomas Aquinas who experienced uh, so much from his intellectual prowess, but he still kind of hit up against it himself, right, saying at the end of his life, everything I wrote is a straw compared to this. Or whether it's a John of the Cross, Teresa of Avalis, all these beautiful saints who talk about the fact that they say, when they get to the top of those rungs of the ladder, they say, I don't have words for this. Words would do it injustice. This union that I've started to encounter, I can't give you the words because it's too much. It would do you no favors. Because some things just go beyond the words, dear friends. They go beyond the words because what God has in store for us is nothing short of astonishing. It brings into crystallization then what we just heard in the gospel today. We need to be ready for this. We need to allow our hearts to be prepared to receive this gift, to live God's commandments so that our hearts can receive the fullness of his gift. Because if we're not prepared, it's not going to work out well. Because you have the ten virgins, five have the extra flask, five don't. When the moment comes after a long delay of the bridegroom, they, the, uh, the ones who didn't have any oil said to the ones who did, hey, help us out. And they basically say, we can't, because if we do, we're not going to have enough to get there ourselves. It says, you've got to go into the town and get what you need. And by the time they do that and the time they come back, the bridegroom's come and gone, the doors are closed, and it's those words that you know, we, none of us want to hear. It's like, I never knew you. 
never knew you. <coughs> none of us want that, dear friends. But the good news is none of us have to deal with it. If we take ourselves and bring ourselves close to the Lord our God. But it starts with understanding that those most beautiful moments in your life that God stirs up that holy longing within need to be, again, moving from the idol that like that object sometimes becomes beyond it straight to the Lord himself. But don't let that beautiful opportunity of music moving you and such or whatever it is, that art form that kind of pulls you to go by the wayside. Just understand what it's stirring up and where it's stirring you up. Interestingly enough, I end with some quote from a film from the 1990s. Curious, isn't it? But I've been talking about art the whole time, so why not? The film has basically this moment where two of the main characters are stuck in a prison, one unjustly. During this moment, one of them grabs a record of Italian opera and begins to broadcast it to everyone in the entire prison. Now, he knows he's about to get in big trouble. But in that moment, he puts the music up to its full power and lets it radiate throughout. And everything stops. And then you have the narrator, one of the people in the movie, basically say the following. I have no idea to this day what those two Italian ladies were singing about. Truth is, I don't want to know. Some things are best, left unsa are best left unsaid. I'd like to think they were singing about something so beautiful it can't be expressed in words makes your heart ache because of it. I tell you, their voices soared higher and farther than anybody in a gray place dares to dream. It was like some beautiful bird flapped into our drab little cage and made those walls dissolve away. And for the briefest of moments, every last one of us was free. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. That all who minister in the church be leaders who serve and servants who lead, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community continue to honor all who have given the ultimate sacrifice in the quest for freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of this community and their loved ones who have, just, have died receive the abundant fruit of God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick or near death and those who care for them know the reality of God's love through the community support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those friends and loved ones who have gone on before us, especially for all the holy souls for this memorial mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions of our parish prayer chain, along with those prayers that we hold in the corners of our own hearts known to God alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, as we lift up all those, all those in our heart to you, most especially those, Lord, we've lost over this last year into your holy care where we may see them again. We ask you to stir in our own hearts the gifts of love, grace, and mercy, that we may see your design at work in our life and make our way towards you, our eternal destiny, and our heavenly homeland. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are brought to the altar, let us join together in singing hymn number 468, The Kings of Love My Shepherd Is, 468.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, they become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm on, in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, all those souls we entrust to your care at the memorial mass today, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that all of them who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Just one big way I cherish all you gave me every day Cause you are mine forever love Watching me from a heart
So remember that our land is free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we.
us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, I invite you next week to set aside Saturday evening and join us for our annual Turkey Social. It's been a little bit since we've been able to run it, but this is the first time we've been able to run it since the joys of COVID. So we really encourage you to come out, enjoy an evening together, of fellowship, friendship, you know, maybe a few tears if you lose the raffles or two, you know, it doesn't matter. But we want you there because it's a beautiful gift and it supports our parish community in so many different ways. So if you can set aside next Saturday night, join us again right after following the five o'clock mass down in the parish hall. It would be great to have you to be able to enjoy all of those gifts of friendship and fellowship with one, of one another. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great week, everyone. As we go forth together, let us sing hymn number 584, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. 584. <laughs>